an inform What's up guys? This is going to be a, an informative video that's going to talk about closely of the uh, design of the 2015 through 2017 Mustang. Um, this is the 6th generation Mustang, uh, codenamed by Ford the S550. Uh, this is designed by Kemal Keurig. And some of the design cues are used for this car. Uh, for example, was the uh, interior of a fighter jet and airplane, and as well as the uh, the floating giant fist um, found in Detroit. Joe Lewis, boxer Joe Lewis. So I guess we'll start off with the front end. As you can see, it kind of it kind of shows. It gives you that resemblance of a of a fist. It has a really mean, aggressive look in front end, and. Um, the designer, Kamal Keurig, he used um, designs from previous Mustangs. He, he decided to just combine them all into one. Uh, so this has many different little details from many Mustangs, as far as the 65 Mustang through the 68 and the Shelbys. And I guess we'll start off with the front, the front grille. As you can see, it's the uh, Superman logo trapezoidal shape portrays a really aggressive look, really reminiscent to the old school Mustangs. And this grill has a special has a special vents for airflow as you can see right here. And each model like the EcoBoost, the V6 and the, the Coyote 5.0 liter, they all have their distinct grill to allow a certain amount of air into the airbox. Um, but this is an aftermarket grill so but you can still see the little space right here where the air could go could uh, flow now something that some of y'all might not might not be fully aware of is that down right here next to the fog lamps there's this air vent right there now that air vent was created for the intent of cooling the the brakes right before um, the air leaves uh, the wheel wells and I, I imagine that at a certain speed the air will flow in through here somehow come back through in, cool the brakes, and then exit out to the side of the vehicle. Now another thing is that this car was uh, has so far has been the most aerodynamic Mustang created by Ford and some of the things that helped produce that was the, the larger front splitter and the air dams right under, underneath as you can see to help minimize airflow under the car. Now this is a performance package uh, GT so it's gonna have a, a more aggressive more um, aerodynamic splitter than the other uh, let's say um, the, uh, the Mustangs that don't have the performance package. Now, we're going to look over here on the A-pillar. Ford, this time, they slanted the A-pillar more than what they usually have the A-pillar set at. Uh, this creates more of an aggressive uh, arrow look. And for the first time in a, long, in a while, in the Mustang generations, they brought back the Fastback. It's a really uh, special key right there. Now, one of the things I had in mind when creating this this uh, new design was they wanted a, a wider rear end and you can just see the lines the lines of the rear wheel wells has a really aggressive look like the 67 68 Mustangs and the rear is definitely very wide which was a problem because uh, that created the car to become more heavier and they're, they're trying to aim for a lighter Mustang but but the addition of the IRS and uh, widening the car well it obviously added some weight but in my opinion I think they did a really great job it, it's, it's absolutely beautiful Now, as you can see here in the front headlights, these three lines, this is reminiscent to the 65 Mustang with the gills on the front front fascia of the, the Mustang. I'll see if I can post a picture. 
But that's a really sweet little addition to the front end. Now, an interesting uh, design aspect of the uh, IRS is that the geometry of the IRS on this car, this generation, produced twice as much anti-squats and anti-airlift force um, under heavy acceleration and heavy braking. And if we go around here to the rear, as you can see, Ford brought back the, uh, the tri-bar tail lamps for the Mustang. Very three dimensional, as you can see. And this car overall has a lot of lines. It's, it's a very busy body, as you can see. Um, got a line right there in the back quarter panel, lines to the doors, all throughout the car. And this, I mean, is not just for looks. It's also for aerodynamics as well. And as I said previously, this is the most aerodynamic Mustang Ford has has designed to this date. Now, another interesting uh, fact about this S550 Mustang is that the uh, the design. They look back at the 67 and the Fastback Mustangs, uh, such as also the Boss, the 69 and 70, for the proportional model. And they pretty much morphed it into, uh, morphed like the 65 model into a 69 and 70. Now this is information that I, I got from the book, 2015 Mustang, that's what it's called. There's a lot of good information there, it talks about first generations of Mustangs, all the way up to this Mustang and how they took a lot of the um, design aspects into it and this car it's, I mean, it's a pretty big deal it's the 50th anniversary so so they wanted to get it just right you know they wanted to have uh, things that that dated back to the original Mustang but at the same time um, make it up to the world standard now with the, the modern designs um, and most importantly, they're going to make this car global. Now they're going to start selling it in, in Europe and other parts around the world. So they really wanted to make sure that this, this could be a, a, you know, a World Series car capable of competing against uh, big names out there like BMW, Porsche, and such. And this car, when it was being designed and made, they compared it. They were trying to compare it versus other models for performance such as a Porsche 911, BMW M3. And of course, uh, Ford's very own Boss 302. And surprisingly, this car exceeded all of those uh, all of those expectations that they had comparing against those cars. It even outperformed the Audi A5 as well as the a, a high performance Camaro in the track. And this was, of course, with the uh, the performance package, which is what I have. And some of the things that the performance package includes, um, as you can see, is 14 inch six piston um, Brembo brakes up in the front, the larger splitter in the front as well, the larger radiator, a strut tire brace, uh, unique chassis tuning, stiffer springs, a uh, has a torsion differential with 373s in the rear. The strut tire brace, I think. I'm not sure if I said that. And I believe that's it um, as far as the performance package. So it's a quite capable car, as, as you can see now. And now I think we'll move to the interior. So as you can see now we're in the inside of the car. Let's go ahead and turn on the car. It's pretty hot outside. Now. So as I said before, this is the uh performance package. So 
uh, it's another addition to the performance package is that you get these two gauges right here the oil pressure and the vacuum gauge right there as well as this nice uh, dash overlay which is like a, a metallic fish scale look so as I said earlier Ford took in consideration for the interior uh, like an aeronautical design um, such as if you're inside of a fighter jet cockpit per se so down here you have to begin with these nice little toggle switches you have the emergency the traction control steering mode and mode like driving mode export snow etc and th this is something that you'd probably find in an airplane you know switches toggles and um, and also it's something that's found in the Ford GT which Ford thought uh, you know a customer would have really appreciate to have that into a, a Mustang so as you can see this right here in the dash if you look closely pretty much almost look like it's like wings off of an airplane um, also the the gauges right here the tachometer and the, and the speedometer they show like that that airplane style tax you know you'd find our gauges excuse me on an airplane such as the speedometer you see it says ground speed so those are pretty neat little cues about the mustang the design and also they took in consideration the, the console now the console in previous generations they would have like the cup holder right in the center or in a very uncomfortable spot for shifting the car. Now they actually moved it over and created a more ergonomic console for the driver. And for the first time, as I forgot to mention, they they put a push start button into the Mustang now. This is something new, something that hasn't been ever uh, incorporated into a Mustang in the past. So those are uh, pretty neat little details. And also right here, you see it says Mustang since 1964. You know, as you know, this is a 50th anniversary Mustang, so they wanted to incorporate back, you know, resemblance uh, back to the original Mustang. So now I want to talk about the, uh, well, since I have the 5.0 liter, I know a little more information about this. So this, as you as y'all know, this is the uh, Coyote, Coyote 5.0 liter for, by Ford. Um, now they pretty much took it, you know, the same from the uh, 11 to 14s. This is a, uh, this is a refreshed uh, engine versus those. They took into uh, comparison the Boss 302 motor as y'all know, uh, also known as Roadrunner motor. And they did a few other upgrades to pretty much, it's really it's really similar to the the Boss 302 motor. And this uh, refreshed design included a few new things. As I look at my list here, it says, now they um, used larger intake valves, larger exhaust valves, for revised intake cams, revised exhaust cams, they uh, put some stiffer valve springs to fully close at high RPMs. Uh, new cylinder head castings. And they also used uh, center forged connecting rods, which are more lighter and more, more durable in this model. Um, something that's used in the Boss 302 as well. And also, they re redesigned the piston tops, rebalanced and forged the crankshaft. And this motor produces 435 horsepower to the crank and 400 foot-pounds um, transmission is the same as the previous 5.0s it's the the MT82 uh, but they did do a few things to it they uh, they uh, made the shift linkage a little bit better and it's true uh, with this car in my opinion I've had a S197 and now this one and between both shifters that stock uh, this one was really nice honestly uh, it shifted really really smooth you could actually feel the gears going into place um, I ended up upgrading to a, a Stita Triax short shifter kit which I love 
but it, to me it's great. I have no complaints about it whatsoever. And for the auto transmission, they put a, they gave the uh, some paddle shifters, something that you see now in new, nowadays with new vehicles. And a new feature for this car uh, was the line lock feature. Um, you can probably see one of my other videos on my channel. That's where I use the line locks to do uh, burnouts. Pretty much your brakes lock up in the front and your rear is loose, which allows you to spin the tires without um, damaging your rear brakes and have more control. And as you can see, here's a strut tire brace found for the uh, performance package Mustang. Now a lot of this information uh, I took from the, uh, the book, as I said, 20, it's called 2015 Mustang, and also uh, a video on, uh, on Netflix actually, it's called A Faster Horse. Yeah, both of these sources had really good information to uh, take in. And I'm sure there's a lot more things that, I've, that I'm missing, but for now I think I got the, the big points covered. So uh, I definitely uh, encourage you guys to check out those two resources. And um, well, that's, that's all for now, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. All right, y'all take care and have a good one.